the real goal would be not having to undergo hip replacement at all. How could we do that? Wouldn't that be great? And there has been a revolution recently in, in this particular topic. Out of the blue, a, a surgeon by the name of Reinhold Gans, and he's a very interesting guy, he only speaks German, from, uh, from Switzerland, has studied and, and reported on a problem called femoroacetabular impingement. And in the late 90s, he promoted this diagnosis as possibly the cause of most cases of osteoarthritis in the world today. And that's a bold and big statement. Search, you might search for this under femoroacetabular impingement, or FAI. And the name of the operation that has been devised specifically for this condition is called osteochondroplasty. In a normal hip, the head is centered over the neck of the femur. There is this offset on either side equal. And when the hip is bent up into this kind of position, there is clearance and room for the neck to, to not bump into the edge of the cup. In many people, normal people, you could pull them off the street and take x-rays, many people have this abnormal shape from the time of birth, from the time of development, their teenage growth years. And this is a, a, a specific deformity called a cam deformity in which it's not really round. It's got this sort of offset or egg shape to it. And when the hip is flexed up, this prominent area of neck now impinges against the edge of the cup and causes damage here. The initial osteoarthritis lesion begins here and then progresses through the rest of the hip joint. This is probably happening in a pre-symptomatic um, level, that is without pain, in many people who are 30, many people who are 40, and then they come to us when they're 50 and the horse is already out of the barn. But there are people who present and come to us in their 40s and say, boy, my hip hurts and it hurts when I play some sports. Hockey is a classic one, gymnastics, some swimming, diving events where there's a lot of hip flexion positioning, rowers, and, and here's an example of this. It's a little subtle on this x-ray, but this is the more typical or normal offset of the head on the neck, and there's less here, so when they flex up, there's this impingement against the rim. The operation would be trimming this off. And I hadn't really thought hard about it, but you've all had breakfast there. I mean, I am going to show some uh, surgery pictures. So if you, it's like the spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Close your eyes for a second here. This is, a, this is an actual intraoperative photo of this prominent bone area. You can see how rough and ragged the edge of the femoral head is here, here, where it has been banging up against the edge of the cup here. And the, the pointer is pointing at the, this cam deformity. And the surgery is trimming and, and, and reproducing this offset. And in, in orthopedic surgery, like in every other science, you don't get something for nothing. This is a big operation. This is an example of the anatomy of all the stuff you got to go through to get to that ball, to get to that edge of that cup. And so it is not a little operation. It is not a minimally invasive operation. It can take nine months, 12 months to recover. And, and right now, we don't have very long-term data. But maybe this is a procedure that will really forestall or eliminate secondary development of osteoarthritis and the need for hip replacement in some of these people. We've been, we've been looking at this odd shape of the femoral head for a long time. It's been described, but, but he really deserves a lot of credit, Professor Gans, for, for finally going, you know, and putting the, you know, connecting the dots as this week's buzzword is to, 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 to invent the surgery that would address it. 